Good afternoon, good evening, saints of God. We are here today the last Sunday of August. This is August 30th, 2015. And we're going to speak to you today about having faith in God. And I'm going to read, to read to you from a familiar portion of scripture that we all know. Uh, I'm going to turn your attention to the book of Mark, the Apostle Mark, the 11th chapter. And we're going to start reading at the 20th verse and we're going to end at the 26th verse. Uh, and when you have it, say amen. 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 <coughs> Just pulling this up on, on my computer real quick. Just uh, bear with me for a quick second. I have my little Mark what? 11. Okay. Mark 11. Mark 11. Okay, and I want you to look at your neighbor and say, God moves. Look at your neighbor and say, God moves. God moves by the power. By the power of your faith. Of your faith. Okay, uh, I'm gonna read these six, these six verses. And we will, uh, you have, I have six things to give you that God has given to me. Uh, the six points I, I must tell you in the scripture here. And uh, we'll go to that. And when you have it again, we'll, we'll decree and, uh, and respond by amen. Okay, and 11 and 20 says, And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Mm -hmm. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedest is withered away. And Jesus answered, said unto him, them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, Whatsoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. And be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, mm -hmm. but shall believe that those things which he have said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you <coughs> desire when ye pray, believe that re ye receive, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. Mm -hmm. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. I want you to repeat after me. The power. The power. The power. Let's say that again, saints. The power. The power. Of your faith. Of your faith. Well, the first thing that happened in this, this story, uh, <coughs> earlier in the 11th chapter of Mark, uh, Jesus and the, the disciples were walking along uh, the road and they saw a fig tree because, you know, Jesus was hungry. And the fig tree had no fruit on it. So uh, Jesus looked at the fig tree and said, no man should eat uh, of this fig tree thereafter. So he cursed it. So since Jesus said it, he was God in the flesh. And he spoke and he decreed and declared it, that no man would ever eat from this tree. That means that the tree will no longer be in existence anymore. So, uh, aren't you glad that we have a God that gives us mercy? That shows us mercy whenever we have messed up so many times and times again. That he gives us space to 
ask for forgiveness and get back in right standing. That's not to say that he gave us carte blanche to sin. So understand that. He gives us a chance Amen. to say, forgive me. Now, here, Jesus cursed the fig tree. And the apostle Peter recognized the tree when they went back the same way in which they came. He said, Lord, well, ain't that that tree that, that you cursed? And, and uh, he just said to them, have faith in God, because the Lord already knew uh, what, what uh, was in their minds already. And Jesus began to say these things. He said, so you hear me? Truly, I'm saying to you, so whatever you, you say to your problem, in other words, a mouth, you tell it to move and be cast in the sea and not doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have what you, what you say. So there was seven things uh, that Jesus, I said six early, but the Lord said seven. Uh, there's seven things that the Lord said that I, I was able to extract out of Scripture. The first thing that he says is to have faith in God. So when we have faith in God, we go over to the book of James. We, we go over to the book of James. And uh, we go there. We go to the book of James. Uh, the James 1 and 5 and he said if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth it not and it shall be given him and the 6th verse said but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed mm -hmm. let not a man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So what he, what James was saying, the apostle James, the brother of the Lord, was basically saying, you got to have faith in God. And when you have faith in, faith in God, you can't uh, ask wavering. You can't be indecisive as to what you're asking. And this is what Jesus was telling the, the disciples at that time, have faith in God. You, you got to know what you're asking and believe what you're asking and uh, in your belief that you're going to get what you have asked for if you will not doubt in your heart. So we know that when we have faith in God uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews 11, 1 and 2, it says, uh, Now faith is the substance Amen. of things hoped for, the evidence of things not see. Uh, that is talking about what faith is. It's a substance. You know, in science, we say a substance is a compound, an element, or a mixture. So faith is one of those things in the spirit realm is which is uh, element, elementary, uh, an element, the most basic tenets, uh, tenets, and as I spell, uh, say, the most basic things in spirituality, in uh, our belief in God, that he truly exists, and that he can do all things. So, have faith in God. The second thing that Jesus said, he said, open your mouth. In other words, make a declaration. Speak to your situation. So, if your situation is not favorable, we have to speak to our situation. The Apostle Paul coined the phrase that we should uh, call those things that be not as though they were. And then uh, uh, when our situation is not well, we could also uh, speak of the, uh, the things that the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans. He said, Romans 8 and, 8 and 28, For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to thee call according to whose purpose? His purpose. His purpose. Come on, Saint. Y'all talk to me today. Amen. All right. 
I gotta know that I'm still a, still alive in the land of the living, and I'm just not talking. Yeah. Okay. So you know, y'all 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 talk to me today. All righty. So he said that we have to speak to these things, and sometimes when in, in our lives we have to understand that our words have power. Uh, it says that in in the Bible that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So therefore, we have to be careful what comes out of our mouths. Because we can speak a thing and we give power to the angels, to the angelic hosts, to perform a thing, which, which we pray to God. Or we give demons room to uh, expedite a, a something that they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so when, you, when you've heard uh, or, or you say, that, say something like, you're never going to get out of that situation, then... Uh, you're allowing yourselves to be tormented by the tormentors. And then when you walk in disobedience to God and you refuse to turn, he's, he's knocking at the door of your heart saying, okay, I'm giving you a chance. All you have to do is turn around to me <coughs> and say, Lord, here I am. Yes. But many of us out here, you know, we go to everything else but the Lord Jesus, but the truth. The Bible says that we perish for the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. And some things that we should know are standing right in front of our face. And we refuse to hear it because it's not fit into a package of what we want to hear. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a living witness of that too. You know, some things we don't, we don't like to hear. And, you know, God does, does his things, his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And... We just have to accept what God, God uh, says, what He allows, and and that be that. And then, you know, we do we got to do and get it done. So we have to decree and declare uh, what our situation will be. So you know, if we're in a in a jam and we we saying okay. You hear people often say that uh, when they say, "Well, how you doing?" They say, "I'm, I'm, I'm, I'm broke, gut, busted, and disgusted." So you, that was a word curse, you know. When you say you're broke, busted, and disgusted, mm -hmm. so that's giving you know the enemy uh, room to just torment you more to keep you in a, a state in your mind of that you are broke, uh, busted, and disgusted. But then you, when you turn your words around and you say, I am healthy, I am wealthy, and am highly favored in the Lord, uh, those words will take life and it will become reality, it will come to fruition in your spirit, man. So therefore, you should, we should all, and I'm speaking to myself too because God says it first comes to the, to the prophet that has to speak it first before he conveys it to the message to God's people. Amen. We have to speak to our situation. Where there was a time, you know, where I was going through so bad. And I was like, Lord, I, I, I'm going through so bad. I feel that you're going to never let me get out of this. And it was like the more that I said it, I just kept going through. Kept going through. Kept going through. And I just, and I just thought, and I heard this message one time at, at, uh, at church. And, uh, this bishop prophesied, I'm not going to say the bishop's name, but this bishop, he prophesied to me. And he spoke something to me that was spoken to me from another preacher uh, back in 2001. And almost verbatim. Because, you know, I was going through the situation with, with you know, the jobs and the people not, you know, doing, doing me right and, you know, all kind of stuff. And I would be praying and crying out to the Lord, Lord, why do I got to go through this? Why, why, Lord? And, and this, and, and the Lord was fixing things in my character. So he don't allow us to go through things for nothing. And because I uh, went through those things, I know how to deal with them uh, with that, and the Lord delivered me from that situation with, with the job, and everything is stable like it's supposed to be, uh, where everything is 
more consistent uh, so I could take care of my family. And it is because I stopped speaking word curses against myself and saying I was never going to get up. And I begin to say that God is going to bless me and that I'm coming out of Lodabar. Because when you're in Lodabar so long, you just feel like, oh God, is there anything better? And you know, I was down in that situation where all I could do was look up. And I said, God, you didn't bring me here to just leave me. But Lord, I know you have something for me. This apostle prophesied to me and said, you know, you're going from, you're going from your place of, uh, from the place where you were preparing, and this would be your place of promise. And I was like, wow, Lord, you know, is this my place of promise? Well, it seems like I'm going through more, uh, through a lot of stupid stuff. But the stuff that I was going through that would help shape my character was through people in the ministry. You know, people, the, the people that I go, went to church with every Sunday, every Wednesday night, and every other time when we went to service, going through things. The enemy was working in people. And I began to just cry out to the Lord. And the Lord heard my cry. And I did what he told me to do, and he delivered me out of that situation. Move, Angela. And then the third thing Jesus tells us in the scripture, he tells us to tell your situation to move away. So in other words, when he said that, I'm paraphrasing, he said, tell this mountain to be moved and to be cast in the sea. So when, you're, when, when a situation is starting to come up and it's, it's, not, it's not what God ordained, uh, you can tell it, uh-uh, uh-uh, devil. Uh, this is not going to happen. You're not going to do You're not gonna do this. You're not going to pull this one again. Oh, the devil is a lie. See, you have to, you have to speak to your situation uh, and tell it to move. A few weeks ago, we had a real bad storm that was trying to develop into a tornado. And we began to pray and speak against that. And the spout that was trying to come down out of the clouds went back up in the clouds and the wind stopped and it just was only rain. So we spoke to that situation that was happening and God heard our prayer and a storm that was turning into a tornado stopped and it was just only raining after we had all prayed. Bless the name of the Lord. So, you have to speak to that situation and tell it to move. Yes. If it's, if it's not the will of God, you have the power to tell it to step aside. You have the power to employ your angels. Yes. Don't keep your angels waiting in the unemployment line. Huh? You got to call them, call upon the angels and say, work for me. Yes. Do this. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Speak to that situation. And that situation has to move from here to over there. Yes. So the next thing that the Lord is, is saying that we ought to uh, speak to that situation and make it move. I'm not going to be up here before y'all long, saints. So y'all just get with me while, I, while I'm up here. Not, not much to say. Uh, Jesus told us not to... Doubt in our heart. This is the biggest thing that hurts the saints in the body of Christ from uh, receiving what God has for them. Uh, when we start to doubt. I've seen it in, in meetings where uh, preachers would come and pray for folk and they would get and they would be healed. Sitting in church, healed. Yeah. They will be healed up in church. Get out of the wheelchair. Healed. 
walk across the floor from getting out of the wheelchair and hadn't been walking in like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then the next night, they come back to the church service back in the wheelchair. Back in the wheelchair. They doubted what the Lord had done for them. So what they did is they re returned to a place of familiarity. Well, we know that familiarity uh, breeds contempt. So you go back to familiarity, you're going to go back into the same practices of what you were in before uh, God had came, stepped in and made it move. So the first thing, I, I'll use this scenario. When, uh, when the Lord came to the man uh, that was laying on his feet for 38 years, he, he, he said to him, he said to the man, first he had to deal with his mental state. He had to say, will I be made whole? Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the man was like, okay, sure, you know, want to be made whole. And then when the man uh, was made whole, he said, uh, rise up and, and walk. Take him, take him to your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. And the man, so after he dealt with his mind, then his body had to come into alignment. And he got up. So he didn't have doubt as to what the Lord said to him. And they never said in the Bible anywhere that that man returned to that state of being lame on his feet when he had been sitting there for 38 years. That's true. The Bible yeah. never said that he went back to it. So when Jesus came in and told him, be made whole, take up your bed and walk, the man got up. Mm -hmm. He didn't return. He didn't doubt what the Lord says. God says things to us all the time. And I'm speaking to myself, too, because I've been guilty of it, too. That he would say things that uh, this is coming and that is coming. And then, and then the situation may look grim. And we're like, well, Lord, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But then when I said something like that, I just put a word curse out there. Mm -hmm. So we have to guard what we say out of our mouth. Amen. Because when we don't, when we don't guard what we say out of our mouth, we, cast the, we let the spirit of doubt in. And in, in with doubt comes another spirit, fear. Mm -hmm. See, the spirit of fear and the spirit of doubt keep saints from reaching their potential in God. Uh, where uh, God wants to take us from, from uh, the, the, the cesspool to the palace, from the prison to the palace, you know, when he takes us out of the prison, some of us, you know, will still have the prison mentality uh, when he's trying to take us to the palace. And we're not changing our mind, renewing our minds. As uh, the Apostle Paul said, that I beseech you therefore, brethren, that uh, by the mercies of God, uh, in the name of Jesus. So Jesus said, don't doubt in your heart. Because when it was like this, when Jesus was in Nazareth, he could do no great miracles there because all the people just saw him as, oh, ain't that Joseph, the carpenter's son, Mary's son, you know, Mary's baby? Uh, isn't that, doesn't he have like three other brothers and, a, you know, maybe a sister or something like that? You know, that that's that's the little, you know, dirty boy. He couldn't do no, no great miracles in Nazareth because of the people doubted who he was. They doubted that he was the Christ that was sent here to the world to uh, bring us back to the Lord and to die for our sins. He, they doubted who he was. He said in the word, they, they said in the word that, uh, that, he, that he came unto his own. And they received him not. For he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, his stripes we are healed. So, saints, we have to not doubt. If, you, if something comes in your mind, when you see something... You know, you better keep that thought and cast down that thought. Because the Bible says that we are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We, we have to. 
we have to get our minds under subjection <coughs> because our thought process will will keep uh, certain things from God getting to us uh, yeah. in the manner of which He works. See, God is not in works works uh, in time. He works in, through eternity, so He's outside of time. So we we got to understand that God doesn't work in the uh, the thing of how we uh, think of time. And if we continue to think that, you know, we'll we'll just keep on letting the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear come in. Uh, the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear will cripple you in life from moving forward. If the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear will call will cause us not to move forward in, in, in the things that God told us to do. Uh, the spirit of doubt, you know, and, and that's what plagued me. And the Lord had to deliver me from the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear because I didn't, I didn't want to be called to the ministry. I didn't want to preach. That was the preaching was the last thing on my mind. And I told God I didn't, I didn't want to preach because I didn't want to go through what I seen my father go through, my grandfather, you know, uh, great grandfather, you know, uncles and all of them. I didn't want to preach. And God called me to preach when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. I remember in a revival at my daddy's church when he was pastoring. This uh, prophetess came and ran a, ran a, a three-day revival. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And she came and I was on the drums playing the, playing the drums at, at, at church. And I was sitting in the corner on the drums. And she said, uh, uh, call me out of the corner. And she started prophesying to me, and I just stood there, and I'm just like, man. And she read me from top to bottom, yeah. told me what the Lord had been saying to me. And I knew the Lord called me to preach. I was 15 years old. I was like, man, I got to go. And I, I was trying to hurry up and leave the altar, you know, because she laid hands on me, prayed for me. I fell out on the floor. You know, the power of God hit me. I fell out on the floor. And I got up. After they got done praying, I ran back over to the drums. All right. Because <laughs> I ran back over to the drums. I was like, I, I was like, no, I, I, wasn't, I didn't, I didn't want to preach because, you know, I was seeing all the stuff that was happening. So because of the spirit of fear and because of doubt, <coughs> I didn't answer, I didn't say yes to God to preach until I was... 21 years old. So from 15 to 21, I was in my flesh of saying no to God and doing every sinful thing that I could to try to run away from God. Saying no. And God will keep on saying, you call every time. And then when I went to college, it got worse. You know, I'm, I'm saying this because this is something that God really delivered me from. Amen. And he can deliver you from the spirit of fear and the spirit of doubt. Uh, when I went to college and I go to church, and if God sent some prophet there, it was like, man, they always call me. And I'd be like trying to hide from, from the prophets. <laughs> I would be trying to hide from the prophets in church. And they'd be all, oh, you, young man right there. I'd be like, man, I'll never forget I go back home to, 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 to Milwaukee, and this, this prophet came to my home church there, uh, and he ran a revival for, for, you know, a few days. And this man didn't even know my name. God gave the man my name. And this man, this man uh, didn't know me. He ain't never seen me. He lived in another city. And he said, God said, there is a young man named Michael here. And he wants you to come up to the altar right now. And I was the only Michael in the building. I'm, and then, you know, uh, other people tried to deny and, and say that prophecy wasn't for you, but that... And this man began to prophesy to me of what the devil was trying to do to my back. 
and at that time I was I was I was in high school and I was a senior in high school and I was wrestling and all of that and stuff, playing sports. And he began to tell me what the devil, what the plan of the enemy was that he was trying to do to me. And you know, other people try to doubt it and say, no, that ain't God. That ain't God. And I was like, ooh, yeah. It, it. And then seeing things that uh, happened later, God was sending me a warning of what not to do so I wouldn't hurt myself. And then other times, <laughs> i never forget this one. Oh, boy. After I was in the ministry... For one year, I, and, and I had, uh, and I, but I, I hadn't preached my trial sermon, and this was, and this was uh, the summer of 1998, and I had so much fear and doubt because I was so scared uh, to stand in front of people. I would start stuttering so hard and start stammering and sweating and and just. And would the throat would feel like it had a whole bunch of cotton in it, and and I'd be like, uh, you know, I mean, really stuttering like I was, you know, uh, uh, water boy. I was stuttering like water boy. It was I was that bad because I was so fearful and I was so scared and had so much doubt. I didn't think that the Lord could deliver me from a stuttering tongue. The Lord delivered me from a stammering, stuttering tongue <coughs> and took that fear out of me that I'm able to stand in front of anybody and speak now. I walked around with my head down, low self-esteem, you know, didn't, didn't love myself. People of God. And I'll never forget this, this, this prophetess, and this is this prophetess spoke into my life. She lives here in this state, and one day uh, we are going to invite this prophetess uh, to preach at our ministry. Amen. This prophetess spoke into my life in 1998 and told me what God had called me to. Now, mind you. Nobody, nobody in the church knew that God called me to the ministry except the bishop because I went to the bishop personally in his office in private time and had a private conversation with the bishop and told him what God, and he said, I know because God told me that he called you, that his hand is upon you and that, you know, but he wants to work on, work on you. And, you know, this is what the bishop had told me then. Um, and in that, that meeting, she spoke into my life. And she laid hands and prayed for me. And she rebuked the spirit of fear so tough off of me. I mean, I was out. I was out on the floor for part of the service. I was out. And uh, I remember when I, when I got up, a bunch of people was on the altar laid out on the floor. Mm -hmm. So she worked with the doubt and, and the fear that was that was in me because I was so scared. I didn't think that I would be able to be I was trying to compare myself to other people uh, as to how they were able to deliver the word and I was not. And you know, I tell you, what what was so funny? There was another prophetess that this prophetess was a member of my family, and we were at a funeral. And and this and God had His hand heavy on this prophetess, and she began to to pray and intercess, and we in the repast, and during after the funeral was over. Mm -hmm. We had already took, committed the body at the site and came back to the church. And this is the repast. And she's down there prophesying and intercessing. And 
I'm trying to get away. <laughs> I'm trying to move away. And she said, uh-uh. You, preacher, right there, you. Come here. She read my card from top to bottom. And she said, she said to me, she said to me, stop comparing yourself to other people. She, I was like, and she said, you know what God told you. He didn't make you to be like nobody else. He said, she said to me, she said, be yourself. She said, you can't do it. She said, God says, don't do it like your granddaddy did it. Because that was his anointing that he gave him. But God has a special anointing on your life. And don't doubt the, and she said, and don't doubt the anointing that God has given you. And she said, don't let nobody tell you that you can't, that you can't do what God said. And don't let nobody get in your way of doing what God has told you to do. Amen. You hear God. Mm. I mean, she read my card from top to bottom. Prophesied to me so tough, I was in tears. And, and I know some of the other family members that were around, some of the, the doubters and the spectators were there and was probably mad because as to what, what she said. Now, this member of, fam of my family didn't have very much dealings with me in, in my life as she dealt with, you know, my mother and my father because I was always a little kid and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. She never really, you know, paid that much attention to me until that day that the Spirit of the Lord was on her so tough. And she began to read people's cards, lay hands on them, folk falling out in, in the fellowship hall of the church. <laughs> While they plates are sitting on the table. <laughs> so this goes to say, you you got to let the spirit of fear and doubt go. Mm -hmm. Because it will cripple you. Jesus said, don't doubt in your heart. And, and he says, in that scripture, when you, when you have it, when you believe it, he says... But you shall believe those things which you say will come to pass. That is, that is the fifth thing. Believe and receive what you said is going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So if you believe and receive it, if you believe and receive it, it's going to come to pass. Okay. So understand, people of God, when you and God have a conversation, and you're in prayer, and you believe that God is going to uh, come through with what He said He was going to do. You believe it, and then you receive it. In other words, you receive it in your spirit, man. Yeah. That you're gonna get it before it comes to the natural. Yes. I'll go for instance when when uh, when I was gonna get accepted and when I got accepted in the graduate school, I was. I was praying because, you know, my other stints of graduate school, before this, this stint that I, I, you know, graduated with my master's, it just didn't seem like the timing was right and the things were not going to work. And I was like, Lord, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do because I really want to go back and go finish what I started. And I began to pray and I was like, Lord, should I go to, you know, this school and should I go to that school? And, uh. And should I go here or should I go there? And God told me, you need to go to graduate school and finish what yeah. I told you to finish. And I was like, God, I don't want no masters of education. <laughs> and he was telling me to go get a masters of education because he wanted me teaching in the school system. And I was like, Lord, you know, I, I want to go. I want to go get a masters, you know, in, in chemistry. A master's in biology, you know. Mm -hmm. He was like, not right now. He said, I want you to go get a master's of education. Mm. And I'm like, okay, God, well, I can't afford, you know, this much because I had so much loans and I know that this, you know, I'm only going to get so much money, Lord. Well, how am I going to do that? And I'm, you know, asking this. And he said, uh, don't you see that my hand is in this? So I began to pray. And he said, 
applied to that school. So I applied to the school, uh, got my transcripts from my undergraduate institution, and turned it in, and then they asked for the letter, letters of recommendation. So I had got letters, three letters of recommendation. And, and then the next thing I know, a few weeks later, I get a letter in the mail to say that I was accepted at Tennessee State University in the graduate school. And I was like, oh God, thank you. Because I was praying and I believed. I was like, Lord, you told me to do this, to go get this Master's of Education. So now, Lord, I'm trusting you. And I'm believing and I'm receiving that you're gonna, that it's going to come to pass and I'm going to finally graduate with this degree. Amen. Because of the other two times in my things were not right in life, I, I failed to get the other two degrees that I was trying to go after. Mm -hmm. Because God said, no, that's not it right now. Because he know where the shift was, what, what was happening and where I was going. Amen. And, and, and people I had to reach. So, with that, he told me, believe and receive. That's what the Lord said. Believe and receive and you will have uh, what you pray for. Amen. And then uh, the sixth thing. When you pray. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever ye desire. So Jesus said that you got to have a desire. Amen. Amen. And he said if you delight also in him, that he will give you what? Desire. The Desire. desires of your heart. Yeah. So let me tell you, people yes. of God out there that are seeking a mate to be married, the Bible says that he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. So understand, man of God, that if you're looking for a wife out there, Ye desire a wife. You delight yourself in the Lord. He'll help you find the right wife for you. Woman of God out there are waiting for that husband. Keep yourself hidden and keep doing the will of God so that your Boaz will find you. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Jesus said that whatever sort of things you desire when you pray. So he said that when you desire, have a desire, you have to pray. In other words, you have to communicate with God. Believe, and he said that again. In other words, believe, believing is what? To have a belief in something is to what? It's to have faith. So Jesus is directly telling, believe that you receive them. In other words, have faith that you're going to get it. And he said, you'll get it. <laughs> if you believe it, that you're going to get it, you're going to get it. So that's just a simple way of breaking it down uh, for you. And the last thing, the seventh thing that the Lord says. Amen. Uh, and I'm just going to break it down in one point. In other words, if, if you got you got dead cats on the line and you're trying to ask God for something, get the dead cats off the line, please. Oh, mm -hmm. amen. Get get the get the mess uh, get get the mess out. Get the dead cats off the line, so God can bless you. Because if you got this mess in your way, and you saying, Lord Jesus, 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 help me, help me, help me, help me, Lord. But the Lord is saying, Okay, you got this problem over here that you won't deal with. That I keep sending the same folk to deal with it, and you need to deal with this so before I can move on this other thing. That's right. And we all know. And all of us somewhere have some kind of situation that uh, the Lord has been telling us that we need to deal with. Amen. That we need to make amends and, uh, and, 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 and get it right so we can move on. Now I had a situation the, the other day at the grocery store with the person. And then that situation in the grocery store with the person, you know, they were, you know, mean and, real mean and nasty to me. And the Lord said to me, hold your peace. And I sat there and I held my peace. And that was the hardest thing to do. To hold your peace. When somebody is doing something contrary and talking to you like you're a plump idiot. And you know, and I'm, I'm just like, okay, God. And there at the store, 
the people were looking at me like, aren't you going to say something? You know, this man is talking to you like you like you two years old. Mm -hmm. right. Aren't you going to say something? Mm -hmm. And the Lord just like glued my mouth shut. Mm. But then when I got home, I vented and told my wife what happened at the store. And, you know, they told me what what God was saying in, in, in that moment. And I had to and, and I had to uh, get myself back in alignment and communicate with the person's boss and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry for my response because my response as to what I say, how, I, how I've made a complaint uh, was not was was not in the right manner. So I am sorry. So we have to be really careful. To get dead cats off the line Amen. before God can bless us the way that we did. Uh, if you got a, if you got beef with somebody, and I'm, I'm just gonna put it like that, if you got beef, if you beefing with somebody, beefing. I mean that's that that's the way to put it. That's how we understand stuff now. Amen. If you got a all or you got beef with somebody, and you've been beefing. And it's been cooking in the stew pot for a long time. Like beef stew. You beefing. You fuming. And you just had it up to here with, with that person. You got to get that right. And ask the Lord to forgive you, but also forgive that person. So the Lord won't hold that against you. Because the Bible says that if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, will forgive you for your trespasses. Right. So all of us right. got some some mess over here that you know we need to get cleared up. You know, so the Bible, Jesus said to to all the all the all, all the men that were trying to stone the woman caught in adultery, uh, he said, "He that is without sin cast the first stone." Mm -hmm. And see, all of them dropped their rocks and walked <laughs> off. But but they never said nothing to the dude that was you know they were trying to get his freak on. They never tried to stone him. They tried to stone the woman. They should have stoned. Just try to stone dude too. Cause see, if you know, if they would have stoned him. They would be like, oh, oh yeah, they doing it too. So you know, we have to, we have to get all the dead cats off the line, and say, okay, Lord, you know, I'm wrong in that situation, and I need to go get it straight. I need to get it right. Uh, so I be forgiven. And sometimes we be praying and not the crying. And say, Lord, help me. And then you hear sometimes, Lord, help me. <laughs> and and you be like, well, Lord, why do you feel that you're so far away from me, Lord? Why, Lord? Why Why does it feel like I, I can't get through to you, Lord? Why My prayer is only reaching the ceiling, but it's not going anywhere. And God says, because you haven't forgiven. I've been there where I've asked the Lord uh, why am, am, am I not moving forward? And, you know, we have to have to forgive and let people off the hook, even though they treated us like crap on the ground. Like, if they treated us like dookie. I, yeah, I had to be gross to get y'all attention, but... If we're treated, if we've been treated like that, some people, you know, they know better, but they haven't had a really great day either. And they have lashed out by, by how they felt. Or there's some deficiency in their life that caused them to step out. So in other words, we have to find out what their root is. Amen. We have to find out why people are so mean and so cantankerous all the time that they want to snap at everybody like a, a pit bull and a junkyard dog, you know. We have to get those dead cats off the line. And I tell you, when I went to the grocery, to that same grocery store today, I went to the store and I saw that man again and I said, how are you doing today, sir? And he said, he said to me, his reply said, it's, listen to the saints. Listen, yeah. listen to this. Yeah. I went to that same grocery store today. And I saw that gentleman. 
And I said, how you doing, sir? He said, terrible. Mm -hmm. And immediately when he said terrible, and, 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 and I said, I'm doing great. And I immediately started praying under my breath. And start asking the Lord to just help him and show him that he's really real. Because this man told me before when I had a conversation with him that he doesn't believe, uh, have any belief in the Lord or anything. That he believes that when you die, you die. Mm -hmm. And I started to pray for this man while he was, while he, you know, was talking to me and doing stuff in front of me. And I made it my business. To go to the man after he after he had you know done whatever, I I did the godly thing to go back to this man and communicate with him. Amen. Because what he did the other day, I mean that caused confusion, called, almost caused a, a seed of bitterness, a root to come. And I was like, no, I'm not I'm not going to allow the devil give the devil any ground. So I'm going to go room, make this situation right. And go talk to this man. And right there, when he opened his mouth and spoke, God let me see the root of what he was dealing with. Somebody has failed him. Mm -hmm. But because of that, since things have failed him, he thinks God has failed him. And he thinks that God doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, saints of God, you know, God believes, God wants you to, uh, wants to move on things for you by the power of your faith. If you have a strong belief, a faith in God, that he will deliver you, that he will set you free, mm -hmm. that he will save you, that he will clean you up and make you new, and like freshly fallen snow again, he will do it. He will do it. If you had soul ties with other people and you just can't seem to get it out of your spirit that you your mind just keeps going back to uh, fantasies and things that you have done in your life before. Yeah. If you know God can can break those unhealthy soul ties from you, He can do it. If you have those those things aware that when you see a person, your body starts to react a certain way. That's a soul tie. Whether, you know, if it was sexual or not. Or it could be a soul tie if that person has done damage. And then when your body, when you see that person, your blood pressure start going. And your fists start tightening up. And you see red. And you be ready. You be ready to grab that pistol out your purse, or the or the, or the pistol off your, your side of your hip. You know, we gotta get the dead cats off the mind. Yes. Cause see, I'm quick to admit, even right now I'm sitting here, because I I've, I've had those those times and where when I seen certain people that I felt my blood was boiling, that I was like, if they say one word to me. I'm going to pop off on them right now in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had to, had to work on my character to get the, the rage, uh, raging temper, how it, how it was, because my temper was really bad. I mean, I, I would fight at a drop of a hat, and the Lord had to deliver me. He had to deliver me. Because the last time I had gotten to a fight with somebody, I, I, I could have killed them. You know, I, I, I really put them in a hurt locker. And, you know, and I was like, oh, God, you know, forgive me. And, and I had to tell the guy that I was sorry. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that I, that I had to hurt you like that. I'm, I'm sorry. But, you know, I couldn't let you do what you was trying to do. But I'm going to tell you, people of God, believe in the power of your faith, that God can save you, that he can heal you, that he can deliver you, that he can make you whole.
and he can make every situation new for you. So, people of God, I leave you with this. Have faith in God and trust and believe in everything that this Bible tells you. Be blessed. Amen. Amen.